Okay, so I think we will kick off because we don't want to uh, leave people waiting for those who did join timely. So I will start by saying good morning, good day, and good afternoon, because I think for many people joining, it's actually the afternoon. For me, it is morning where I sit, um, but, but I know that, that we are in different time zones. So I'm delighted to welcome you all to this webinar today. Uh, it is focusing on progress on nutrition for growth commitments. And it is jointly organized by um, the Nutrition for Growth Outreach Group. Um, I will be moderating today. My name is Marie Derling. I'm a nutrition advocacy advisor at the World Food Program. Uh, and we have fellow um, colleagues from the Nutrition for Growth Outreach Group also on the line to support this webinar. So it's a joint effort. I'm specifically very happy to have so many uh, wonderful speakers to hear from today. Um, and for many uh, colleagues joining on the line. So I will start with just a little bit of housekeeping um, so that we're all on the same page. And I will start by saying that uh, there is interpretation available. Um, so please do check, we have a Russian interpretation. So if you do need Russian interpretation, please ensure that you click that. Um, there is a, a section for, for, for interpretation below. So please do, do connect to that. Um, in addition, I'm happy to share that this webinar is recorded, so it will be available afterwards and we will be sharing that with participants. So you can also share it with others who might want to follow it uh, afterwards. Um, we will be having um, opportunity to ask questions. So there's a solid part of the agenda with opportunity to ask questions that you might have. Um, and I would ask you to already um, use the Q&A function. Uh, you will see it also in the bar below, below the, the, the video you can see the, the Q&A function. So please do plug in your question there already as you, as you think of it, because then we can start preparing those answers to those questions. Um, and also you will keep it fresh in your mind because of course uh, we were like, oh, I will ask this question. And then the time, the time goes and then you, you forget about the question. So please do plug it in as, as you hear it. We will also have the opportunity to raise hands in the Q&A section itself. So, so we really encourage you to, to come in and, and ask your question. Um, I would also just ask everybody to stay on mute when you're when you're not speaking, because of course that's uh, that will make it a lot easier to um, to not have any disturbances. So let me just check. So I think I might only um, give a little bit of intro for those of you who don't know what the N4G Outreach Group is. Um, so it's a multitude of partners. Uh, including the Sun Movement Secretariat, uh, many UN agencies like WFP, civil society organizations, uh, and also donors working together to uh, support a successful nutrition for growth in 2021. So supporting mobilization of country commitments. And this group of partners wanted to continue to work together in 2022 and below to encourage continued momentum that we remember and, 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 and really move those commitments from theory into practice, from words into action. So, so this is um, a continued, uh, almost one year after Nutrition for Growth Summit, we wanted to revisit uh, what were the commitments made and what progress has been made uh, across different countries in um, moving towards implementation of, of these commitments. So we do know that we are in an extraordinarily difficult time. We know that uh, we're not in the same world that we were in one year ago. Uh, we've had already malnutrition rates increasing because of because of conflict, because of climate change. We also had the impact of COVID, and now we have a full-blown global food crisis with also the impact of the increasing food prices and fertilizer and, and, and fuel prices. So we know that the situation is extraordinarily difficult across many contexts, and we know that it, malnutrition rates are increasing, and at the same time, it might be more difficult to, to actually prioritize nutrition. But we also know that it has never been more important to actually prioritize nutrition than, than it is now. So, so this webinar is a way to um, bring together all the stakeholders that were engaged, because uh, we do know that last year in the lead up to Nutrition for Growth, there was this extraordinary collaboration across many different countries where stakeholders came together to support, to really make Nutrition for Growth a moment that counted um, and to ensure that um, ambitious commitments and the right commitments were made at country level that will make a difference to move the needle on nutrition in, in those countries. Uh, and we'd really like to encourage 
this continued collaboration as we move into 2023 and beyond to continue look at what can we do to continue move the nutrition agenda? How can we continue to move towards uh, implementing commitments, prioritizing maybe the actions that are most critical in this context and, and mobilizing around them and also supporting governments to, 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 to move towards implementation and also to, to, to be accountable for progress as well. And we know that everybody has a role to play. So, so this is really the framing for, for this webinar. Um, so we will hear uh, from a number of stakeholders on the call. We will hear um, a presentation from the Global Nutrition Report with um, like the new fresh of the press with new information and tools that they have available for um, further accountability and reporting on progress on commitments. And we will hear uh, very excitingly from the governments of Bangladesh, Yemen and Timor-Leste, who will share their experiences in how they have um, taken forward their NFG commitments in this, in this past year and what's next uh, in, in, in their countries on this, on this agenda. And we will also have the opportunity to, to discuss and, and, and ask questions. We're also very lucky to have the government of France, the host of the next Nutrition for Girls Summit with us on the line. We're very delighted and we'll be hearing some closing remarks as well. But before, be, without uh, me speaking any further, uh, I'm very happy to officially kick off the webinar. And we will start by hearing a brief uh, uh, video greeting and message from the Sun Movement Coordinator, Ms. Gerda Verberg. Good day, welcome to this event. Can you imagine it's already a year ago that the Nutrition for Growth Summit was organized by Japan? And more countries than ever have made a strong commitment to invest in nutrition. A huge commitment. And after one year, it is time to take stock. Where are you in implementing the commitment of your country? Do you get the right support? Do you get enough support? What can you learn from others? What are the challenges you are facing? So this event is there to tell your story, to share your experiences, but also to ask your questions and to learn from each other. Because nutrition is something that you are making happen together. And for that reason, I invite you speak up and speak out so that after this event, we are all inspired to even gear up nutrition as the best investment in people's future and the future for our countries. Thank you. Thank you so much to the Sun Coordinator for this inspiring opening message. So I'm now very pleased to uh, give the floor to Dr. Giacomo Zanello, who is a member of the Global Nutrition Report's core independent expert group. And he'll be sharing a little bit about recent, very fresh new tools that will be useful for, for countries and other stakeholders as they move towards implementation and reporting. Um, so um, Dr. Zanello, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very, I'm really pleased to be here today to present the latest Global Nutrition Report. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation and everyone in the audience that has joined this important event. Those webinars are an opportunity to celebrate the achievement of last year and for G Summit and continue to build the momentum for greater nutrition action. This presentation will focus on the latest Global Nutrition Report entitled Stronger, Stronger Commitment for Greater Action, taking us through the nutrition accountability framework and its value and presenting key findings on commitments made by stakeholders in Nutrition Year of Action. The, uh, the 2022 Global Nutrition Report will be officially launched today at half past nine GMT uh, time, so this pre uh, presentation is a preview of the report, but it will be available in uh, a little bit more than one hour for everyone. So the need for more action supported by strength and accountability was highlighted throughout 2021 
a year that was endorsed by stakeholders as the Nutrition Year of Action. It was initiated in December 2020 and was successfully concluded in December 2021 with the Tokyo and 4G Summit, where stakeholders came together to commit to improve nutrition. But why is this need now more important than ever? We face a global nutrition crisis with worrying trends across every form of malnutrition, from anger to obesity. To put the things in perspective, one in 10 people are hungry or undernourished, and one in three are overweight or obese. The current nutrition challenges faced by countries worldwide, which continue to be stressed by COVID-19 and the impact of climate change, are expected to worsen, even further given the war in Ukraine and its impact on food and nutrition security globally. Solving the global nutrition crisis has never been more urgent and must be tackled by all working together. To deliver such a step change in action, we need a step change in accountability to ensure commitments made translate into much needed impact. The GNR was endorsed to provide this step change in accountability. In the Nutrition Year of Action, the GNR launched the Nutrition Accountability Framework, in short, the NAF, the first global independent public platform for monitoring nutrition action. The NAF enables all commitment on nutrition, including and beyond N4G, to be consistently monitored and reported on public. By capturing commitment from anyone at any time, it has the potential to improve our understanding of nutrition action like never before. Critically, the NAF is promoting transparency and a shared culture of responsibility across diverse actors. So how does the NAF work? The visual shows the full cycle of the NAF, which includes eight steps involving the active engagement of stakeholders, the orange boxes, with the GNR, the blue boxes. In short, Stakeholders develop a smart commitment leveraging the NAF guidance, and I'm starting from the first box. Stakeholders then re register the commitment using the NAF platform. The GNR reviews registered commitment for eligibility and assign them to relevant action categories and assess their smartness. The GNR then publishes commitments through the NAF commitment tracker and updates data as this is being verified. Stakeholder report on progress. Then the GNR reviews the reported progress to assess how commitment translates into action. The GNR then verifies and publishes progress. Lastly, stakeholder learn from published data, evidence, and guidance enabling them to make new and strengthened commitment. And the cycle continues in a, in, a, in a cycle. A fundamental principle in all this process is transparency. In doing so, the NAF builds trust and support stronger collaboration between stakeholders. And it provides the information needed to deliver better nutrition outcomes. So the GNR has developed robust tools to support each step of the NAF cycle. As briefly mentioned in the previous slide, those include the NAF platform, a publicly available platform for stakeholders to sign up, register, and later to report on the progress of their commitment. Forms use the inclusive standardized data field to ensure commitment are smart and allow progress to be systematically monitored. The Nutrition Action Classification System, a classification system that identifies the type of action that uh, taken in a consistent and standardized way. This means that for the first time, we are able to map nutrition action in a holistic and clear way. 
We then have the Nutritional Action Smartness Index, a ranking system that enables assessment and reporting of the smartness of commitment. In doing so, it supports the stakeholders make their commitment as smart as trackable as possible. And finally, the NAF Commitment Tracker, an online interactive tool for making all data on commitments publicly available. Throughout the verification process, stakeholders can provide additional clarification that are subsequently reflected on the tracker. The NAF and its tool will evolve over time, allowing us to share learning, identify gaps in action, and inform in a priority setting. The NAF enabled the stakeholder in the Nutrition Year of Action to register the commitment and subsequently allow the GNR to analyze those. In the slide that follow, we are going to take a glimpse of this finding, starting with overall finding across stakeholders. An unprecedented number of nutrition commitment have been made, including over 42.6 billion US dollars in financial investment. 198 Stakeholder from 84 countries made 433 commitment with 897 goals. Progress will be measured against these goals. Most of those commitments were made by 78 country governments making domestic commitment, followed by 56 CSO, 30 private sector businesses. 21 donors, including donor governments, seven international organizations, and seven academic institutions. The 2021 Tokyo N4G Summit was the most successful to date with 859 goals committed, making up 96% of all goals registered. This is almost double the number of goals made at previous N4G summits. Geographical coverage of commitment range from global to local and most at a national coverage. Separating out the goals that specified a target country, and this is what this map shows us, we found that these, those concentrated in the region of Africa and, South, and Southeast Asia, primarily aim at low and lower middle income countries. In contrast, high income countries, such as those in Europe and North America and Japan, were mainly targeted as part of goals with global coverage, not with a unique country focus. The following slide shows uh, uh, the type of commitment by, made by all stakeholders using the Nutrition Action Classification System. This system allowed us uh, to classify commitment goals into three main levels, enabling the orange part of the pie, policy, the dark blue, and impact, the light blue each further broken down into four subcategories. For example, financial is an enabling subcategory and are nutrition an impact subcategory. Almost half of all commitment goals were categorized as enabling, focused on creating an enabling environment for nutrition action. Leadership and governance was the most prominent type recognizing a bold political leadership and good governance as foundation for delivering effective nutrition policies. There was a strong focus on undernutrition. This tallies with the low and lower middle income countries being most targeted. By contrast, diet, which is 6% of all goals, obesity and diet related NCDs, 2.6%, and food and nutrition security, 1.6%, received the least attention. 
These findings highlight the need for far greater focus on food and nutrition security. Stakeholders self-reported which of the global nutrition target they commitment aligned to, with many commitment often aligning with multiple target, largely the maternal, infant, and young child nutrition, MIYCN1. Looking at this pie, we see that on aggregate, 41% of commitment align only with the MIYCN target, as compared with 8% of commitment that were aligned only with diet-related NC target. A third of the commitment aligned with both set of targets. The private sector is the only stakeholder group that aligned the majority of its commitment with the diet-related NCDs target. The important effort shown in the commitments to tackle undernutrition should now be built up to ensure all forms of malnutrition and their drivers are addressed. Excuse me, uh, Dr. Zanello. Uh, yeah. I just uh, see that time is, is running away with us and because we only have an hour in total. I would right. ask you kindly if you could uh, just, just wrap up in the next two minutes or so and, and focus on the, maybe the, the action slides um, to, yeah. to end. I'm really sorry for this. Yeah. But no, 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 no. We, we always to... want to talk more. So I apologize for that. So I'm kindly Thank ask uh, uh, Charlotte whether we can go to the slide number 17. And so we can focus uh, on, uh, on the recommendation. Uh, I, I believe we will share the presentation and the report will be online uh, later today in just one hour, so everyone will be able to look at the, uh, at, the, at the findings. But I would like to conclude that this presentation just uh, highlighting five key recommendations that can help us uh, uh, to address the global nutrition crisis. And those recommendations derive from the findings and the evidence that we have in our, in our report. The first one is that we need a far broader constituency of actors to step up worldwide and making commitment to improve nutrition that can be accounted for. We need to make commitment to reflect, sustain, and increase external and domestic financing for nutrition that can be easily uh, tracked. We need uh, far greater attention on food security that truly include nutrition security by placing greater emphasis on quality of food and not only on access to quantity of food. We need the commitment that will, be, will bring a transformative policies for our food system and deliver universal access to health, affordable, and sustainable produced food. Finally, we need a commitment that promotes universal access to nutrition, care services that are integrated in the health system. Finally, we would like to urge all stakeholders to continue using the NAF for greater action. The NAF increases evidence, knowledge, and learning about nutrition action in a way that builds trust, enhances collaboration, and strengthens effort that leads to ever more impactful in, uh, action. So I would like to uh, thank everyone that uh, uh, was uh, um, listening to the presentation. The report will be officially launched today at half past nine GMT time, so in just a little bit more one hour. And uh, I, I encourage everyone to review and report and engage with us uh, on the social media. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Dr. Zanello. Really value these, these remarks. So encourage everybody to have a look at the report when it comes out and also definitely to continue to explore the NAF. Um, so we will head into the main uh, section of the, um, of the webinar today, when we'll be hearing from the governments of Bangladesh, Yemen, and Timor-Leste. And we're really excited to hear uh, about how processes have been across these, these three countries in the past year and how they see the way forward. 
So I will start with uh, inviting uh, Dr. Uh, Islam Bulbul, Director of the Bangladesh National Nutrition Council from the government of Bangladesh to, to share a Bangladesh experience with us. So I would like to ask you, Dr. Bulbul, um, so we know that Bangladesh made uh, nutrition for growth commitments last year, and we'd be re very interested to hear about the process, how that came about, and specifically also what the process has been in the past year, as with everything that has happened in the world and, and in the country, in terms of starting to, to reflect about how to take these commitments forward in the current context. Um, so I'd be very happy to hear um, some, some experiences from, from Bangladesh. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mari. Uh, this is Dr. Bulbul working as a uh, uh, sound technical uh, focal point here in Bangladesh, and I also working as an acting line director in National Nutrition Services. So very uh, good morning, good evening, or good afternoon to all of you. Uh, so thank you so much for arranging such wonderful uh, uh, initiatives event uh, on the N4G commitments and its progress. Uh, actually, you know, nutrition is one of the important component in uh, if we consider about the health outcome as well as the development. So uh, much more emphasis was given uh, to uh, the better improvement of the nutrition globally. And we have seen that uh, till now, uh, there were several uh, like uh, uh, N4G summit. One was in London, then uh, in Milan, and this time it was in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, so we actually try to focus on, uh, on uh, like uh, six types of commitment here in Bangladesh. Uh, we consider uh, the main uh, domain that was given into uh, our uh, that is agenda, uh, the thematic area. Uh, we consider the health, uh, which is making the nutrition as an integral to the universal health coverage. Uh, then <clears throat> for the food, uh, then resilience, accountability, and financing. So, uh, and also we made uh, six commitment types. Uh, one is political and governance, then policy related, financial issues, operational plan. Uh, then monitoring, reporting, and finally uh, measuring the impact. So we came up with 12 uh, commitment here in Bangladesh, uh, mostly relates with uh, several sectoral uh, cross-country issues as well. Uh, through this process, uh, our country, Sound Focal Point, uh, uh, she actually advised and she sit together with uh, our all platforms here in uh, Sound Movement. That is, you know, six platforms, and we have developed several uh, technical working group. Uh, then we did uh, different types of national and subnational level uh, consultation, and finally we uh, developed the commitment. Uh, however, uh, what are the uh, commitment we have developed? Uh, that is uh, a very uh, generic way. Uh, many countries has developed, uh, but thing uh, we have kept uh, here uh, is uh, like uh, uh, we try to uh, figure out uh, how our achievement is regarding the World Health Assembly target, as well as SDG target, as also you know that we have several country, I mean, national level target as well, because of uh, we have National Plan of Action for Nutrition. So we figure out which are the common area uh, we can set up uh, for our commitment, as well as which might be smart uh, and implementable, uh, well implement implementable. So we have taken uh, such a way to develop our uh, commitments. Uh, finally, uh, now, uh, in in the uh, you know in the Japan uh, summit, our honourable prime minister actually declared uh, the commitment. So it was uh, uh, to get the essence of the highest level of the uh, political uh, uh, issues uh, came up uh, with the uh, implementation part uh, of our commitment. Uh, so here uh, we have come through that uh, there are six commitment on the health issues. Uh, there are uh, three commitments on the food system, one on resilience and accountability and commitment uh, finance that is uh, two commitments total 12 
we have 12 commitments here in uh, Bangladesh. And uh, almost a uh, few of the commitments are very cross-cutting. Uh, the challenges uh, or uh, what are the, our next plan uh, we, are, uh, we are doing here. Actually, uh, after having this commitment, we uh, have uh, coming up with some action plan as well. Uh, and it's on process. And uh, we are uh, with the system of uh, global I mean, GNR reporting system. We are providing the report. Uh, however, uh, uh, the things we should uh, consider in the coming days, one is, is the global pace. As uh, 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 in the presentation, we have seen uh, the global uh, commitments from different governments as well as the donor. Uh, whatever we have committed, still it is only 42.6 billion. So we have to make some pace uh, to the global networks to make uh, more investment in this process uh, to improve the nutrition. Secondly, uh, uh, improve the country coordination mechanism. I mean, multi-country uh, mechanism to uh, achieve the next I mean, uh, uh, our commitment uh, uh, within the system. Finally, uh, the role of uh, the Sun movement, I will also uh, request uh, to have some uh, more uh, like networking within uh, the countries as well as within the uh, different uh, uh, international organization uh, to come forward uh, to achieve our uh, goal. I will talk later because we have limited time, but uh, uh, still, uh, I will listen from another countries as well. Then we can also discuss more. Thank you so much, Dr. Bulban. That was really, really insightful. And thank you also for ending with a couple of thoughtful um, things about how we take this forward and how 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 more support is needed. Before head, uh, handing over to uh, the government of Yemen, I'd just like to highlight again that please do use the Q&A function. So if you if you do have questions, for example, on what was just shared from Bangladesh, please do uh, type in your question in the Q&A function uh, below, and you can do that throughout. So we, we have questions lined up by the time we get to the discussion uh, section. So without further ado, I'd love to um, hand the floor to Ms. Karima al Hada, who is planning and liaison specialist at the Scaling Up Nutrition Secretariat. Ministry of Planning and International Cooperation of the Government of Yemen. So Karima, delighted to have you with us. Uh, I would be also very interested to hear from you about how the experience has been in Yemen in this past year that we know has been a very, yeah, a very, a very uh, special and also challenging one uh, globally. So how has the discussions and the process been in terms of thinking about how to take these commitments forward and maybe prioritizing and, 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 and working with different actors? Uh, and also if you have um, any kind of ideas to share in terms of um, what further support might be needed from different stakeholders, and if you have recommendations for other countries as well who might be uh, in a similar situation. So Karima, you have the floor. Thank you so much and um, good morning, good afternoon for everyone. Um, actually, in Yemen, um, we first uh, participated in N4G Summit in 2013, and we had those very realistic and very few commitments that we succeeded in fulfilling them uh, by 2021. And that's why we have, um, it was a chance for us to build on those um, of uh, 2013, uh, the new commitments for 2021. Um, uh, I think uh, everyone knows the situation in Yemen and the conflict uh, going on. So there are many challenges, of course, uh, especially that we have a very, very dynamic uh, context. We have fragmented government. We have a, a challenge in prioritizing the, um, you know, the actions especially that we have so much need for humanitarian uh, interventions, while the N4G commitments in nature, as I think, are developmental. So we, we, we are focusing on food systems, on resilience, and on um, the uh, universal health, health coverage. But uh, it was very good in um, 
in the nature of the N4G commitments that we we can always have the nexus. I mean, the humanitarian development and peace interventions uh, relevant to nutrition. Um, in Yemen, it was a very participatory process that was led by uh, Sun um, Secretariat in the Ministry of Planning and International Cooperation. We had the power of convening all the line ministries from um, two sets of governments, fragmented governments. We have two line ministries for each uh, ministry. It was challenging, but it was very um, a participatory process also. We have also the, the UN partners, um, you know, because of the conflict uh, and also the situation of the, the government, the commitments cannot be made solely by the government. We needed donors and UN to be on board, both of us. All of us, we need to build these commitments because the government of Yemen is not the only actor in um, on ground. So we needed them to, to be part of the process and to be part of the commitment. And that's why we formed this uh, national task force at that time to develop these commitments together from WFP, uh, UNICEF, WHO, and FAO. We worked uh, very hard at that time. We had 10 commitments, and mainly they, uh, they are under the universal health coverage, food system, resilience. And um, under the, res the resilience, we focused on the net, uh, nutrition multi-sectoral plan. We focused on the sun networks, the, um, the business and the CSOs, because the role of these, you know, uh, networks are very uh, essential um, for the implementation in the in the future. We always discuss during the meetings with the Sun and the UN partners. We always discuss the way forward for everything that we have done together. So, the N4G commitments are uh, one of these mutual actions that we are leading uh, at the national level. Uh, tomorrow, I will have a meeting uh, with the UN on the N4G commitments and uh, the way forward. We are planning to uh, have a very clear mechanism on how to report because um, we need to understand more on the reporting mechanism um, and to agree on the key um, uh, partner, which is the, the Sun Secretariat, how we are going to report on behalf of uh, the others. So um, um, I, I think the most important thing for the commitments that we need to balance between the, um, you know, the ambition, we need to be, we, we want to be ambitious, but also we need to be uh, very considered to the limitations. So every time, I think there should be, um, you know, a, a small part of ambition in our commitments. This is my recommendation that we shouldn't stay in our comfortable zone all the time. We need to challenge ourselves and we need, you know, because commitments, it will encourage us to go for, you know, the implementation. So we need to be more courageous in taking actions at the national level because this is the only moment that we will, you know, um, challenge ourselves to do something for the, the people of the country uh, and to leave our comfortable zone for something better for the people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karima. This was a really, really uh, encouraging presentation. Thank you for highlighting the, the multi-sectoral collaboration and the, and, the, and the importance of working with partners both in making the commitments, but also in taking them forward and, and really uh, encouraging that you're, you have a meeting even tomorrow planned in terms of how, how to take some of this forward. So, so that's really an encouragement to, to everybody. Um, so really happy to um, hand over to our third country speaker um, to hear from Timor-Leste, from the government of Timor-Leste. We have uh, Mr. Felipe da Costa, who is the coordinator, coordinator for civil society affairs and the special representative of the prime minister's office for food security and nutrition uh, and the high level politi political focal point to the Sun movement in Timor-Leste. Uh, you have the floor. We're very excited to hear from you, Felipe. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, 
good afternoon and good day everyone that are joining online um, uh, those uh, that are evening also good evening to you uh, i am from timor leste as was already introduced and um, as you can see from the data uh, timor leste is a uh, highest in both food insecurity and also indicators of malnutrition. However, with the level of uh, development partners we have, a resource we have, and the size of country we have, I think this uh, problem, we can tackle it. And we are happy that uh, uh, two years ago, our country is joining the scaling up nutrition movement which we have opportunity for our prime minister to join the Tokyo uh, N4G summit and uh, to state our uh, commitment to, uh, to improve nutrition in our country. Um, as uh, you can see from probably from reports that our uh, commitment at the Tokyo summit is link both food insecurity and also uh, nutrition at the same time. Uh, and uh, in order to implement that commitment, we, we have proceeded with the first to define our priority to do a, a multi-sectoral consolidated action plan. And once that uh, action plan is uh, uh, supported by uh, everyone in country, both development partner, government, uh, civil society, private sector, academia, uh, youth councils, we, uh, we, we feel that everybody is lining behind it. And therefore we move to the next level that is to institutionalizing the movement. So that therefore the government is now working on developing the legal framework to uh, set up a, a mechanism within government system to uh, ensure that uh, this commitment will keep implemented. And thirdly, we think we need to scale up uh, what we have done before. We cannot uh, uh, doing business as usual because time is pressing. So we are investing more right now. We are um, triple up our investment. Uh, I think before was 3 million and we double up, we triple it to 10 million and we, we might increase more. However, we still face challenges. Some of the challenges are the what is what are the actual cost whole total from now to 2030. That will help us to advocate or to for the right investment annually. The second is the, is the right mechanism in place to measure uh, both investment and also our progress. Those are the some some of the challenges. We are lucky that we have uh, enough development partners behind us. We have also UN agencies behind us. We are discussing this um, in, within our coordination platform to ensure that we will uh, uh, develop right system uh, in place. That is in terms of the high level works. With regards to the implementation in the, on the ground, we are uh, also lucky to inform that we have included uh, nutrition in both our universal health coverage as well as our social protection schemes. We have a um, health mechanism system up to what we call Saudi na familia or health in family. Well, we include nutrition services in, in it. We also have a social protection schemes targeting to pregnant women and, and to, uh, to families with children under five. We are also scaling up or boosting up our breastfeeding campaign where we, we are campaigning for every offices to have breastfeeding rooms. We are, uh, so we are uh, a few examples because of that time, I think in one minute more. So we are expanding our uh, approaches uh, to more, more people and more geographical location. Uh, and more importantly, we are to ensure that our food system is also reflecting nutrition sensitive um, um, interventions in there. And therefore, I think uh, we are in the right track. The only uh, challenge, is, only question here, here is, uh, we, we need also to work on uh, overcoming some of the challenges that I had mentioned before. 
with that, I thank you very much for uh, those, uh, everyone that are staying with, with me online. Thank you so much for sharing this experience, extremely rich, uh, rich experiences that you're sharing and so encouraging to hear how Timo Leste is already putting in place a very uh, thorough plan in terms of how to take this forward. And it's also really encouraging how, how you're sharing how nutrition is integrated in the health system, in the social protection system, and also working to have it more strengthened in the food system as well. I think this is how this is one of the ways how we can make nutrition, have nutrition impact more sustainably as well. So, so this is really, really excellent. So looking at time, I think we will be heading straight into the Q&A section um, because um, time always runs really fast when you have a lot of interesting things to talk about. So we will now have um, a bit of dedicated time to, to, to discuss. Uh, and I want to encourage everybody, we already have a few questions uh, in the, um, the Q&A uh, written down, so we will be looking at those. And if anybody would like to uh, raise your hand to ask your question live, please do and, and signal to me and then uh, the organizers will ensure that, that your mic is unmuted. Um, and then we have our panelists available to, to, to respond to questions if, if they're a particular one uh, directed to them or if they feel um, inspired to, to respond to, to, to particular questions. So I'd like, I'd like to start because uh, we have two questions um, directed to uh, the Global Nutrition Report. Uh, so maybe uh, you could do both at once, uh, Dr. Zanello. So the first one is around essentially how, how, um, how the Global Nutrition Report could help with the accountability and commitment to invest in nutrition by relevant ministries, because in many countries, nutrition is still seen as a health uh, responsibility. Um, and then there is also um, a question regarding the criteria for the smartness of commitments, as some commitments are at impact level and high level and in, um, outcome. Um, and then uh, the costs that we have are at intervention level with um, which cost cuts across several results. So how could that be handled in terms of reporting on high level commitments? And then I think we had another one, but maybe they're in the answered one. Oh yes, and then also just generally how the NAF could be used by country stakeholders for accountability um, in practice. So that was a lot um, okay. feel free to, to jump in uh, and, and, and answer as, as well as possible. Thank you. Yeah, I, I will try to cover a little bit uh, some of those elements. Uh, uh, given the time, I may not be able to do it in depth. Uh, so please, everyone that has any additional question after the uh, after the seminar to get in touch with the GNR and uh, we will be able to uh, support uh, and answer any question. So the, the, uh, the first one about uh, how the NAF and the GNR or the NAF can be used by country stakeholder to enhance accountability in practice. Um, I think uh, uh, the GNR and the NAF in particular can uh, help to enhance accountability in two ways. The first one is uh, uh, allowing smart commitment in uh, uh, both at the submission phase, but also during the verification phase. So we have now just entered the verification phase in which we are following up with all the stakeholder to improve the smartness of their commitment. We have contacted one third of the stakeholder, the remaining will be in January, but everyone will receive an email from the GNR with guidance on how to improve the smartness of their commitment. Uh, this is the first time that we are doing this. So there is a strong, strong emphasis for uh, uh, the GNR to support stakeholder in submitting uh, uh, smart commitment. Uh, this emphasis is grounded in the fact that smart commitment it's a key factor for accountability. And accountability can also be uh, uh, enhanced by the fact that all the information are in the, uh, in the NAF tracker online, both in terms of the original submission, but also any uh, verified information and later on the progress. 
uh, everyone will be able to download the data, not just the latest uh, uh, data set from the uh, website, but also a historical version of the data. So people can see how things have changed over time. And we believe a combination of all those activities will really help in enhance accountability in practice. Uh, I'm trying to touch a little bit on, on another, uh, another question about, I think I touch a little bit on the smartness of the commitment. And the last question about uh, uh, quite specific, how the impact level and the high level outcome can be uh, assessed. I think that is a quite a specific question, which uh, I would suggest uh, that to be clarified during the verification process. Uh, I think it's important to get the details right uh, so I can provide a better, a better answer. So I, I suggest uh, and I will, uh, I will mention in the chat uh, to, to continue that conversation uh, possibly uh, since it's quite specific uh, during, uh, during uh, the verification. Uh, if there will be more time later, I'm more than happy to answer some of the questions, more questions on some that I didn't answer, but I will try to type them out uh, right now in the in the chat. Thank you so much. That's extremely helpful. So I will have a look at the other questions. So there is one question that I think many people would like to understand more about, and this is about how we can track and enhance nutrition investment by sector to scale up the interventions. Um, and this is very relevant, of course, for taking forward commitments and be able to track it and report on it as well. So I see Karima that you already responded. So I was wondering if Karima, you'd like to share a few more, uh, elaborate a little bit more on your thoughts on that. And then I'd also be really happy, uh, uh, Felipe, if you would like to come in as well to share maybe a little bit more about uh, Timo Lester's experience in terms of kind of integrating nutrition in, in, in those systems that you mentioned and how you might go about kind of tracking that investment uh, in nutrition and, 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 the, and the impact as well, perhaps, if there's anything you could share. So Karima, if you would want to come in for, for, for two minutes to share, expand a little bit more on your answer, and then Felipe, I would love to hear from you as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Actually, I speaking of the experience in Yemen, I think, uh, the process of uh, developing a national multi-sectoral nutrition action plan is very, very inspiring process because gathering all the sectors around uh, one table and discussing the interventions that the sectors can uh, contribute to better nutrition is very inspiring to each other. They learn from each other because usually they are technically uh, very uh, focusing on their own you know, sectors. So getting around one table, hear from each other, they will learn how to complement each other, how to complete each other, and also how to um, inspire each other for uh, new and um, very essential interventions. This is as a first step. Then um, having the action plan in place, uh, it will be easier to know uh, which sector are doing what, and uh, when and, and so on. Then we can track these contributions and actions based on the monitoring and evaluation and or the meal system for the action plan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Could you also come in uh, briefly just to expand a little bit more, Felipe? That would be really helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. For the more list experience, uh, we, uh, we have defined a multi-sectoral action plan that is uh, uh, defining 18 priorities. These 18 priorities actually reprioritizing from over 300 priorities from different sectors. And in order to go down to 18 priority, it was very interesting discussion because Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Health, Education, Public Works, everybody uh, would, would like to have a uh, everything implemented. So that was a kind of a very interesting discussion. So uh, we have, and uh, once we have uh, agreed on fewer intervention, and we now request that everybody should focus their resources to invest more on those pre fewer interventions. Those fewer interventions is actually we consulted with 
uh, national, international as well, to ensure that intervention is actually have multiple impact that can achieve our goals. Uh, so we now have a national system, uh, a, a tracking system under the Minister of Finance uh, that set up high level indicator and different uh, ministries has to report against uh, both their investment and also their uh, uh, progress. So I think uh, this is in place. And I think if we, uh, we what we need is to make uh, this system is uh, respect and utilized by different sector as well as the development partners. I think that's what I can uh, uh, share more. Thank you. This is brilliant. Thank you so much. And I saw uh, Dr. Uh, Bulba was also Maria, nodding. Yeah. Would you would you uh, like Maria, to add to that as well? Yeah, I just want to add uh, two or three things with Karima. One thing is very crucial that is uh, and important to have a multi-sectoral action plan uh, within a country and uh, with a I mean, uh, specific uh, monitoring framework is very much important. Finally, as uh, uh, you already mentioned that uh, the uh, tracking system for the in, I mean, investment or financial tracking system. So nowadays, uh, many of the countries are doing the financial tracking system within the uh, government, as well as some countries are also doing uh, both uh, government as well as the donors part. So this might be one of the way, but uh, finally, uh, the monitoring framework actually will give you the results of, uh, I mean, what are the outcome you can measure. So this is very much important. Thank you, Mani. Thank you so much. Extremely helpful and, and such complimentary answers as well from everybody. Um, I saw we had a hand up uh, just before. Now the hand went down. Did you still want to come in? Um, if so, please do raise your hand again. I think it was uh, Lewin Mar Lang. Sorry for not pronouncing the name probably right. Uh, oh, yeah, the hand is back up. So so uh, please, you, you, you have the floor if you'd like to ask your question live. Thank yes, you. thank you. Thank you, Mary, for the chance. Actually, the two questions that have raised have been answered, but just based on the explanation from Karima, uh, her initial uh, response to my question is that having the multi-sectoral national plan of action on nutrition is the first uh, step to track the each sectoral investment in nutrition. But the challenge in countries like Myanmar, uh, the problem is we don't have the solid data on the investment in nutrition. I mean, nutrition, for example, in agricultural sector, education sector, we don't have the data on previous investment in nutrition. So it, it was quite challenging for us to scale up how much we should expand the investment by other sectors on for the investment in nutrition. That was uh, my point. And I want to hear more on the explanation and suggestion from the, uh, relevant uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. A, a very, very uh, pertinent question. So uh, I, I, I hand the floor to our panelists to, to jump in. Uh, I don't know who would like to go first. Uh, I can just share uh, two, three things, uh, the experience from Bangladesh. Uh, that is uh, during uh, developing or uh, having the uh, financial tracking system, so we actually face uh, this problem uh, as well. Uh, so whatever we have done, that is in our country, we have a very good system for the uh, budgeting part. We called it IBAS. So in the, in the uh, system, there is already, I mean, uh, online, uh, 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 these are already given. Uh, that is which sector has what portion of uh, budgeting. So this might be one way uh, to identify uh, the investment part uh, from the government sectors. Thank you. Would you like to come in as well, Felipe, to, to complement that? Yeah, uh, just in uh, to share experience in Timor-Leste, we have a. Uh, um, uh, platform uh, by the government uh, where uh, um, uh, each minister, when they prepare their budget, they have to uh, insert their uh, program budget into that platform. We call it the Dalamba Futuro. 
uh, and and also the free balance system where uh, the budget is is actually uh, uh, implement uh, I mean registered as well as we all we have also aid effectiveness registry system where the development partner also register their investment however the challenges is also uh, I think we need to uh, disaggregate the uh, or differentiate the investment that specifically relevant to nutrition and food insecurity and and that is a uh, some of the discussions we have to kind of uh, uh, work more on this uh, government platform we have. And, and uh, we are ad keep advocating for uh, one country system, a uh, government system, and uh, we are happy that uh, one of the donors is actually uh, ha have their uh, support directly into budget, the government system, and so direct budget support. Uh, and and this, this, I think, will be easier for us to resist them uh, in the, uh, so far. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Karima, would you also like to compliment that? Maybe also on the, because some of the question was directed a reflection on what you shared uh, in terms of maybe also how, how any advice on how to over, overcome a lack of data uh, from previous years, for example, um, or anything else you'd like to share? To compliment on yeah, that question. I, thank you so much. Um, I think for the data, it is very challenging and it depends on, you know, the context within each country. So I believe that for nutrition, they have so much um, information systems that we, they need to review and to um, at least start from there, from the, wherever they can and not to let this, you know, uh, stopping them from going forward. Uh, one word from my side as a closing point is uh, it is very important to remind governments on their commitments to nutrition for growth. And I think it is also very important to um, also remind the UN system um, together on their uh, uh, you know, role in supporting the implementation of the uh, commitments at uh, country levels. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Karima. This is extremely helpful. And I, I really also support your point that you said. It's like, we, we cannot help what has been done in the past, but we can only try to kind of do it better from now on. And then of course, next year or the year after or the year after, we will have better data to, to base it on. So, so at least with data, like with many other things, it can, it, we can only always improve. So, so that's maybe an encouragement for, for all of us. So. Uh, I'd like to uh, close with, with one more live question. Um, and I see we're already past time uh, before we do the closing remarks from the government of France. And it's really exciting to see so many questions. I see there is even more in the chat. I would like to mention that we are capturing all of those questions. I saw, for example, there was a finance question that was very pertinent that we will certainly take forward to some of the finance experts including the Sun, uh, the finance expert group in the Sun XCOM. So we will definitely look to take those forward. So, so uh, nothing is, is, is left aside, even though we might not manage to cover everything with a panel um, and people we have on the call. So I'd like to give the floor to uh, Sedou Nidaye, who have, you have your hand up um, to, to, to ask your question. Thank you very much. So I think you should be unmuted. Do we have uh, Jennifer and everybody? Do we have Sidhu Nidaya unmuted? Yeah, okay. So you should be unmuted now. I don't know if you, if you need to push the button yourself as well uh, to speak or just feel free to, to jump. We're not hearing you, so I'll ask one more time. Uh, the microphone is open, but you would need to unmute yourself as well to be able to speak. So check the bottom left um, in the panel below the video and see if you can un unmute yourself as well. And then uh, the floor is yours. Okay, so it seems like we're having some technology challenges. So, so 
because we're we're so close to time or actually over time then i will ask you if you can post your question in the chat instead uh, in the q a sorry and then we will take that forward after the session so now i see that we're already um seven minutes past the 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 hour so i would like us to start wrapping up it's it's clear that we could have had an even more exchange and gone on for longer but hopefully there will be other opportunities to continue this uh, sharing of experiences and 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 advice and 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 giving each other ideas and support on how to take things forward. So, thank you very much again to our esteemed panelists for for being here and sharing your experience and knowledge and also being here to answer questions as well. So, before we're closing our session, uh, we're very extremely pleased to have a representative from the government of France with us. As I think most of you know, uh, the government of France has has committed to, to host the next Nutrition for Growth Summit, uh, which of course uh, we will all be um, excited to work with them uh, to make that a reality in the coming years. Um, so I will invite now uh, Ms. Cecile Adam, who is the Technical Nutrition Advisor in Food Security, Nutrition and Sustain Sustainable Agriculture Department in the Human Development Department in the Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs of France. Uh, Cecile, you have the floor. Thank you, Mary. Um, dear Gerda, dear Sun Focal Points, uh, dear country representatives, and dear N4G Outreach uh, Group partner, partners, uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I am delighted uh, to be here with you and to make some closure remarks for this webinar, and I thank um, the N4G Outreach Group for involving us. Um, as you know, and as um, Mary just reminded us, France will host next edition of Nutrition for Growth uh, Summit in 2024 or 2025. Um, the exact location and date have not yet been defined. Um, we will therefore have the honor and responsibility uh, of succeeding the previous um, organizer, Japan, uh, which did really great in uh, making the, um, this, this, um, the 2021 edition a, a success. The deterioration of nutrition amplified by the many current crises, which uh, have been re uh, reminded, re recalled in this, uh, in this webinar, uh, complicates the, the, the collective um, achievement of our commitments. Uh, staying mobilized all together is a real challenge. Uh, Fr France, uh, therefore, wishes to take up this challenge by continuing to work with all the partners in the frame of uh, the preparation towards next N4G so that nutrition gains uh, visibility. We are still working on designing the international, uh, sorry, the internal organization, which will be responsible for preparing uh, the summit, but in a very exploratory way, um, because it's not yet validated at this stage, we would like to emphasize the following major themes um, and articulate them with the issue of malnutrition, uh, sustainable food systems, climate, and gender. Um, in addition to all the impressive achievements described by the speakers today, uh, I remember as take home messages of today's webinar, uh, uh, recommendations uh, made by, uh, for instance, Dr. Bulbul, aiming at improving national coordination, our recommendations by Dr. Karima, uh, who encouraged everyone not to remain in the comfort zone and find the um, appropriate balance between um, ambition and remaining realistic. And also Dr. Da Costa, um, as Dr. Karima stressed the need to uh, not uh, being too much business as usual. I will stop here. Uh, appointment is therefore made for 2024 or 2025, and uh, milestones such as this webinar will be very precious on our road to N4G. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. It's very encouraging to hear France's commitment to host this summit and to, 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 to work with everybody in the, in the lead up to, to prepare on that. And thank you also for sharing a little sneak peek into the current thinking in terms of some of the topics that might be important um, when, when, when for that summit. Um, I, think, I think they're all very pertinent for the situation that we have in nutrition right now. So thank you so much for that. And, and, and this is definitely a milestone 
between the two summits and, and we will continue to, to build on that in, in the coming period. So we are now, uh, we've now reached the end of this webinar uh, and it's been really um, such a great discussion and such great experiences and information shared. Um, of course, you can never cover everything in such a webinar, but, but this is a bit of a, yeah, restarting the conversation and ensuring that we maintain the momentum. So uh, I would just encourage everybody to uh, take back what you've heard and to really continue with this um, building on the good collaboration that we had last year. And I know we had it across so many countries where different stakeholders were working together in terms of mobilizing and, and making those commitments and formulating the right ones to really learn from our, the experiences we've heard from, from the three countries on the panel today to, to kind of come together and discuss how do we take this forward? How do we need to reprioritize? How do we kind of, um, where do we start the journey? And then also to reach out and ask for support um, as needed, including, uh, for example, asking these specific questions to the Global Nutrition Report in terms of how to um, evaluate the smartness or how to use the NAF, et cetera. So support is there. And, uh, and uh, definitely from the N4G Outreach Group perspective, we'd also be happy to, to see how we can continue to support this effort in 2023. Thank you everybody for joining and for staying online, uh, even though we run a bit over time. Um, we'll be closing the webinar now. I'm wishing everybody uh, a good rest of the day. Thank you so much and bye-bye. Uh, Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Take care.